0% interest rates may be sooner around the corner than we anticipated. As the Federal Reserve's question comes on the table, what's next after the Federal Reserve's big interest rate cut? That we're going to be talking about today and more. And Gerald Powell is probably scratching his head being like, what have I done? What have I unleashed? And we also got people like Jamie Dimon basically saying that he thinks inflation is going to persist. We also have members of the Fed saying that inflation is potentially on a lower path than we were expecting. If that wasn't a ragdoll effect for you guys, I don't know what was, but the CME tool is now pricing in another 50 basis point cut coming in on November 7th, just moments after the election, as the election spices up. But we're gonna be covering out today what's going on in the market, how this interest rate cut affects the market, the levels you guys need to know to profit. If you wanna be bullish, you wanna profit, if you can be bearish, there's ways to make money going both ways. And we will have a special video coming out on Monday about options back testing. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you know when that is coming out, what bell notifications on. And as always, it's gonna be a very spicy, spicy uh, weekend deep dive because we got more bad news if you're looking in the long term of the economy. If you're looking in the short term of the economy and the stock market, again, they're two separate things. So pay close attention to that. First of all, 60% of uh, failure, startup failures have surged more than 60%. Hmm, nothing wrong here. You know, that's just, just, just one data point. Don't, don't worry about that. We also have the one year and three month yield curve basically plummeting to levels that have never been seen before 1929, even surpassing that, surpassing uh, 1970 right 1983 all those wonderful years that was a great time to be a bull in the stock market but the market just keeps on piling higher and also what keeps piling in are the shorts on the market because my goodness these guys yeah, like it's just like my brain my brain hurts because i'm like okay we went from losing negative 60 to doubling down and this has worked out for you when so again, before I digress into that, also the yield curve just piling down into negative territory. That's the way I look at it, the yield curve, guys. I actually look at it inverted to what it's supposed to be. Normally, you would see this actually flip the opposite way around. But then again, I just like looking at it this way. Dealer's preference. But again, as we've studied previously with a yield curve on inversions, you have to notice that the slope gets pretty quick, pretty fast, and it doesn't really stop. You really don't get... Like my partner would like to say, loop-de-loops, right? Oh, that was torture land over here when we were doing loop-de-loops for quite some time. But what does the yield curve basically mean? The yield curve is an indication of how banks operate. They basically lend on one side, which is they borrow on the two year and they lend to the t uh, you 10 years, right? If you go for a, a car loan, they're usually buying like six month bonds and then they're lending you three years, right? So they're making the difference between that split. And subsequently, that interest normally, the 10 year is higher than the two. When the yield curve is uninverted, or sorry, inverted, then therefore, it means that they're basically losing money on every transaction. Now, the banks finally stopped losing money on every transaction after two years of this thing basically being uninverted. And it's one of the biggest grim reapers that has always indicated a recession slash depression coming out into. However, like I said in the beginning, that is not the stock market. The stock market and the yield curve are two separate different entities and the market continues to prove that with just piling and piling and piling higher. Like I basically said, if we go below above 563.03 from the previous week in deep dive, if you guys want to check that one out, it'll be linked down in the description down below. But we said f above 563.03, you go bullish. You go above 565.16, you go super bullish. And guess what? That turned out basically perfectly for us in the week and we continued higher. The one concern that I will discuss in this video is the NASDAQ didn't necessarily do that. And we also saw some further weakness with the Russell. The Russell had a lot of chop and that is indication of indecisiveness in the markets. However, we're gonna be talking about how we can split away all that indecisiveness and how you guys can profit from that. So let's jump over to the S&P first and dive into the weakened levels that we need to pay attention to this week to make the most amount of money. So looking at this, we can clearly see the range is actually tighter for the S&P, which means knowing where you're wrong is going to be very easy this week. It's actually going to be easier than the previous week. I did say in the last week in deep dive that because we had that massive range, it was a little more risky week and I didn't advise necessarily everyone to go full on bullish trades or full on bearish trades. This week is completely different. We have a clear indication of where we need to be bullish and a clear indication of where we need to be bearish. And it's a very tight range. So we can see even hold trades 
breaking below levels and risk on mentality can be a little more out there, especially like we mentioned with the fear and greed index being in greedy territory, we can get to very greedy trades this week indicated by the levels. So the first level we need to pay attention to again is 565.16. That's going to be an area where it's going to be a rotationary point. It was our previous all-time high, also where we found a lot of resistance this previous week, as we noted on Thursday and Friday, oh sorry, going into the Fed, and then Thursday and Friday kind of rotating above it, right? Kind of wicking down to it on Friday and pushing back above it. Again, it was triple witching, which for all those that don't know what that is, it's when the cash market, futures market and commodities market all expire on the same day, which is Friday. VIX would be quad witching, which is only comes around three times per year, roughly where the VIX aligns with all the others. So there's a lot of money to be made and a lot of money to be lost. And that's why you necessarily saw that option pricing and market movements of how jagged it was. Those traditionally around these days. But again, we got that off. We got PCE coming out. And also remember about PCE, we have uh, Waller saying that the inflationary path is potentially lower. So everyone's going to be thinking bullish, right? So we have to keep in mind how we can stay bullish this market. Right now we're above 565.16 and I'd be looking to target that 572.88 number, right? We could easily do a trade on open, ride it up on the week. I may be doing credit spreads, which I will be talking about specifically them being the most profitable trade you can do shown by almost 10 years of data. That's going to be tomorrow's video. So make sure you guys uh, or sorry, that's going to be Tuesday's videos to, uh, recorded on tomorrow. So sorry about that. But again, that is where we're at right now. We're going to be looking at how we can push uh, through these levels and simply put it above 565.16. We need to be bullish. If we're below 565.16, we need to be cautionary that we look at two different levels. First of all, where's the nine day moving average in response to the current price action that we have? And then are we breaking below 559 and 90? If we do, that means, okay, there's something fundamentally wrong. It means that the net speculative positions are correct, that they, the market is going lower, we're failing to break out. Now, the cautionary thing is about the NASDAQ, which we will get into just a second. But breaking below 559.90, then we're gonna be looking at targeting the 50-day moving average again, which would be approximately, once we break that, a nice 1.69% move. We could cover that in a day or two, probably cover 1% one day and then have a wick down bounce up is what I would expect if we were gonna get that bearish situation. I personally put the odds at 75% bullish, 25% bearish this week, just because of where we're sitting at. You really would know once you break below 565.16, that's where like you stop putting positions on and then we just let the market kind of do its thing. If we look like we're catching a bounce, maybe we initiate positions, but really want to get back above that 565.16. Keep adding positions all the way until we break 572.88 which will be a new all-time high for the S&P. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is in a point that you got a little more things you got to pay attention to. First of all, that previous rotationary point that we were we had this week, which was our previous week's high, 476.53 is going to be our bullish bearish indicator. If we're above it, then we need to similarly, like I was mentioning about 565 and the S&P, 476.53 is going to be the bullish indicator for the NASDAQ. If the NASDAQ continues or breaks above any of these two levels, 486, 485, you're Bob's your uncle and you're going bullish because that would indicate, okay, we've broken this point of resistance. There's very thin price action between our all-time high and our previous gap, right? This is actually going to be a gap fill. So the NASDAQ Going through this gap fill of approximately 2% could do this in a very, very quick manner and find very, very little resistance. And you could see that NASDAQ has been lagging previously. And also we got chips that were lagging on Friday. So it begs the question, are chips gonna start leading like I was asking previously? And we also have what could be interpreted as almost like an inverted head and shoulders kind of pattern forming here or a W pattern forming here where we are on that last leg before we launch up. That is very possible on the NASDAQ but we're going to have to pay attention to the 46.45 level. If we break that, it's just full on bullish. We're going to be crushing these bears that are shorting the market. S&P is going to rally most likely in all the others. And the dominant rally is going to be the NASDAQ because it is lagging behind. So that's where the greatest profit opportunity is. If we're breaking below 476.53, then we have to, again, look where that 50-day moving average is. We have to see, are we in this area where we could be bouncing off the nine? If we're holding above the nine on close, then okay, we continue that bullish mentality. If we break the nine on close and we start looking at that lower level at 469.89, 
the 50 day moving average sitting at 468 to 45, then we start set questioning. Okay, I wanna see how it interacts with the 50 day because we've really dragged a lot of the support around here. We've exhausted that support around the 50 because of the previous price action. And then the threat of 449.82 coming to fruition if we break the 50. But we're not gonna be talking about that until we start breaking the 50 day moving average because, well, simply put, I'm not gonna keep telling you, oh, we're gonna, we're hit 449.82 because of X, Y, and Z, just because someone on the internet said so. Just look at the levels and see what the market is wanting. If we're breaking above 46, it obviously wants bullishness. If we're chopping down below 476.53, it obviously may want bearishness or just maybe a dip buying opportunity. I will let you guys decide for yourselves because you are the arbitrator of your own money and you know best more than anybody. So first of all, this is where it gets into a little bit of trickiness. The Russell also has that W pattern, but it's a really ugly W pattern. And this is where I'm gonna be looking at the Russell to see, okay, are we dipping below the nine day and the 50 day again? Are we coming back down below it? Do we keep this angle of ascent, right? If we basically look at this being our angle of ascent, it's looking in an area where it's concerning. It's not necessarily broken, it's not necessarily bad, but I wanna see all the indexes coincide with one another and keep rallying. And that is why I'm gonna be paying attention to the Russell this week, because it is definitely in a position that could show weakness. If we also look at RSP, right? Still above the 90 moving over, still above the 50 day new all time high, I believe, yep. So confirming that the broader market is rallying with the S&P, rallying with the NASDAQ, and that's why I'm not necessarily saying it's a, I'm saying it's a 75-25 split between bullish and bearish, because there's not enough evidence to necessarily say we're going bearish. There's concerns in the bond market. There's concerns in long-term outlook. But again, Bitcoin is just not the best indicator anymore of bullishness or bearishness. I said, we got to watch out for this reject around 65, 64, came up there and we failed to basically hold it. So for all those that are Bitcoin lovers, you're still in this God forsaken wedge that basically will not break, right? Are we going to get this massive rally in Bitcoin? Are we not going to get this massive rally in Bitcoin? Throw it down in the comment section below what you think. I'm really curious to see your thoughts on Bitcoin and anything else that we covered. If we jump quickly through to the VIX, right? We can see the VIX for option pricing is in a depressed level. It's heading back down to what it could be its floor, right? Kind of does a spike, pushes down, spike, pushes down. It's been sitting around this floor of 16, 15, right? I really want to see this thing break down to 12. That would indicate a bullish rally for the S&P because that means everything's calm, collected, and cool. Right now, VIX is in that point where it's like, are you sure you really want to rally? Or are you sure you not really want to rally? Are you sure you want to rally? Not rally, right? So it's, it's looking in this point where it's very, very, very uncertain of what it wants to do. And therefore, it's the question of, are we gonna get down to 14, 13 VIX where everything's gonna become cool collected? Or are we just gonna chop around in this area? I personally don't mind that because then option pricing is definitely in the cards for us to go continuously bullish. So that one's gonna be on the table for us. Again, not necessarily looking to buy VIX just yet considering everything that's going on in the market. I wanna see maybe once we head into Q3, that's where we could see some chop. What is Warren Buffett gonna do? with Bank of America. Again, I have my running theory that he's selling to get below 10% so he can offload the remainder of the stock or a large proportion of the stock similarly to how he did Apple. But enough rambling about that. Fatal's going to give you guys the biggest winners and losers. And then I will be back with him for the discussion part of the video. We're going to talk about housing. We're going to be talking about interest rate cuts, where we see the market going, and various other things that are on the topics, so discussing some of those yield curve inversions in more depth there, and what we're planning to do this week. So I'll catch you guys in a little bit. And after what quite possibly may be the most anticipated week of the year, and by far the most volatile week of of the year it is officially over the fed has cut interest rates by a whopping 0.5 percent and well it kind of got mixed feelings i guess you could say some people believe that the market's not going to run me personally i believe that and others like mike believe that we're set for a recession and well we can see it right here that as of well this past five days the market has gained around 1.34 percent on the s p 500 and on the one day alone well it fell 0.19 percent guys this is just as of friday but as you guys can see right there on the week honestly we could have expected a whole lot more but we still gained a decent amount for this anticipated fomc
When taking a look at these upcoming earnings, so we can see that there really isn't much here. On Monday, we got AAR and Red Cat. On Tuesday, we got AutoZone, KB Home, Progress, and Thor. Wednesday is like the best one of at least so far that we have seen. And that we have Syntas, which is a company that I've actually have been looking at. And Micron, which is uh, it's a fan favorite for a lot of people. Thursday is the biggest one of the week, mainly because of the fact that Costco is reporting earnings after market. And on Friday, we got nothing. So now let's take a look at the S&P 500 for the week. And I got to say, guys, for a 50 basis point cut, I would have expected a lot more green. And, uh, well, we do have a lot of green here. But honestly, I was expecting a lot more. Let's start off with, of course, the technology sector. Worst performer here, it is the company Corvo, losing 5.01%. And the best performer is actually CrowdStrike, gaining 15.71%. Into now the communications sector. We can see here that the worst performer was EA, losing 4.31%. And the best performer it is Meta, gaining 7%. On the dot looking now into the consumer cyclicals worst performer here it is none other than the company avery denison corp losing 3.57 percent and the best performer seems to be none other than the company airbnb gaining 11.41 percent looking now into the consumer defensives the worst one that we have seen so far and well there really isn't that deep green as you guys can see the worst performer it is the company altria group losing 4.85 percent and the best performer seems to be none other than the company wow okay it seems to be guys the company, well, Dollar Tree, gaining 2.91%. The banks are actually doing very, very well, especially the banks diversified. My goodness. Overall, though, guys, very, very green sector, which is, um, ah, uh, whoo. I don't know how I feel about the sector being this green with interest rates being cut. When it comes to the worst performer, it is the company AJG, Arthur J. Gallagher, okay, losing 7.17%. And the best performer is... It is none other than the company Capital One Financial Corp gaining 9.58% into now the, wow, the healthcare is actually very much in the red. We can see here that the worst performer, it is none other than, yeah, it seems to be that one, guys, is definitely the company right down here. Of course, it had to be Walgreens. Wow, you guys can't even see that. Hang on one second. Yeah, you guys can't see that, but it is, it is Walgreens down here. Yeah, that's Walgreens losing. 5.43% and um, this thing may actually get kicked out of the S&P 500 soon because this is about to be a penny stock very, very soon, guys. This is now at $8.71 and the best performer, it is none other than the company Biotechnic Corp gaining 4.86%. Into now the industrials, a lot of green. That's actually a lot of green here, but it's actually a really easy one to determine which one was the worst performer. And that was FedEx. They just had earnings last week and they didn't do too hot, guys, falling 11.08%. And overall, though, the best performer seems to be none other than the company ETN, which is a company that I actually used to own. I got rid of it, but honestly, probably shouldn't have. But it is none other than the company ETN gaining 8.11% into now the real estate a lot of red here wow that's actually a lot of red worst performer it is the company ventas inc losing 4.44 percent okay so it basically took a nice breather this week you guys can see right there that line is pretty massive so not really surprising to see that but overall though the best performer it is the company host hotels and resorts gaining 7.52 percent the utility sector it is Honestly, I really wish this would come down a little bit more because, man, I really wish I would have bought a lot more Southern Company when NEE nuked the entire sector. But you guys can see Southern Company, it's almost at $90, guys. So hopefully you all bought when it did fall that much like about a year ago. Actually, I think it has been a year ago now. Overall, though, the worst performer it is NEE losing 2.23%. And the best performer, wow. Okay, these things have, wow, guys. The company Constellation Energy Corporation getting 30.11%. But take a look at this. You got Vistra gaining 26.1% as well. Wow. Okay, that is that is just absolutely incredible. That's just absolutely crazy, guys. Absolutely crazy. Looking now into the energy sector, Matt, this is wow. This is the this is is this the greenest? Yeah, every single company in this sector, guys, it is completely green. And um, well, we can see here that not the not the worst performer, but I guess the least one that gained was the company Valero only gaining 0.15%. 
Everything else is very deeply in the green, with the best performer being none other than the company Baker Hughes, by the looks of it, gaining 7.9%. But really, anywhere, anywhere in this sector this week, guys, you essentially made out like a bandit. And lastly, when it comes into the basic materials, the worst performer here, it is none other than the company Mosaic, company losing 3.15%. And the best performer, it is the company Vulcan Materials. You guys can't see that, I understand that, but it gained 6.14%. So all in all, guys, really, really interesting week. And, you know, I'm obviously in the camp that this thing is going to go up a lot higher. Mike doesn't really believe that. We'll see. We'll have a fun discussion in the debate in just a few minutes so with that said guys make sure to like subscribe comment really does help here on youtube as well as rumble and take it away mike so i figured uh we start with uh the good old reliable calendar with pce you know it's that time of year again or the month again i should say of uh pce inflation coming back to haunt us I mean, that, that it doesn't really matter anymore now, does it? <laughs> no, no, it's about jobs. It's about how many times we're going to cut this year. And have you seen the new CME tool expectations? Yes, yes. Uh, but do you I know did why? cover it. Huh? But do you know why that is? Well, well, I mean, all I know is that I did see it. Um, I did see it that already in the next FOMC, which is in November 7th, we're already expecting one rate cut, uh, another rate cut at 25 uh, points. Sir, at least that's the last incorrect. time I saw it. You well, at least very... that's the last time I saw it. So that's first of all, Waller said, I'm a bit more confident about inflation running softer, but he also followed up to say inflation is potentially a lower path than we were expecting. And it did not they didn't skip a beat. They went straight to 50 basis points again. Oh my goodness. So it's, wow. it's, it, we're getting ready for 50s now. We're no longer going to be in the 25 basis point. When's the, roll out the 75, ladies and gentlemen. Roll, roll out the, the 75. Roll out the hundred at this point, right? Just bring it down by an entire percent. Well, you right? got you got also uh, Jamie mm -hmm. Diamond saying inflation likely to persist. Of course, but of course. but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We had also one of the Fed members um, touting that I wish I could find it um, about the inflation data is going to come in better than expected. He, here it is. I estimate that August PCE will be very low says fed waller remember they get the data early we're on the week that we're getting the data and therefore the question is how is this thing going to come out right how is this all going to come out again 2.6 previously 2.5 are we in the two are we going to get 2.3 right if he's going to lower right it, it, what 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 is it going to be the funny part about this is is that that inflation data that we're getting uh isn't taking into account the, the rate cut the rate yeah. cut just happened like last week, no, no, so no, it's no, not. No, 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 rate, rate, rate cuts and hikes don't affect inflation. It's you having a job and having the ability to spend money. Come on, get it right. Get with the narrative. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Clearly, clearly, right. It's not the Fed printing money. No, 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 no. no, no. It's, it's not the you, fact that they printed. 40%. You are the problem. Right. You right. are the it's, problem. It's, it's the people who are the problem. Is is the high high employment. Right, it's the high or the low unemployment uh, and people's uh, wage increases. That's yes. that's the main problem yes. when it comes to inflation. Yes. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Even by the way, even though the fact that the core CPI is showing no change. Yeah, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. But uh, we also have some more data that'll be interesting this week. We get Powell speaking on Thursday with GDP coming out. So you know, just a nice like it wasn't bad enough that he. Uh, he gave you the famous transitory comments. We're going to get official GDP expected at 3%, where it previously is 1.4%. So, you know, everything's fine. There's no low GDP. You know, got to pump the numbers up to help a certain someone. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're expecting 3% yeah. in GDP. Well, again, remember, Q3 is where you have the Social Security adjustment. So this report will directly affect... The, inflate, the inflationary adjustment that they have to pay out for Social Security. So question, if I'm deciding how much I'm going to increase your salary by based on the numbers I publish, is it in my best interest to publish low numbers? Remember, September is where it rolls over. That's where the it rolls over to basically be uh, the, because it's reported in Q4. So therefore, it's no longer in the realm of a set the social security inflation adjustment 
which is already going to be 2.5, which is pathetically low in comparison to what inflation was. But it's just, again, this is the numbers that they're going to present before the famous day. I don't know what to do anymore, man. I'm just... I'm just Long the like at this point, I just laugh. At this point, I just laugh at all the stupidity that's currently happening. Well, right, that, it, that's the only. No, we haven't do. even we haven't gotten the, t- the tip of the iceberg of stupidity. Um, I don't know if you've seen this chart yet from Game of Trades, where he takes the one year and the three month yield curve, and it's like you know, it's just it broke every record. It's never it's never been this bad. And I'm like, okay, so. This yield curve is breaking. This yield curve is breaking. Everything's hunky dory. Everything. So okay, 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 okay. I don't know how much more you want to go into the news when it comes to all of this, but I mainly want to talk about how where we think that all of this is going, right? Because you and I have uh, two completely diametric uh, predictions as to where things are going to go. You think that we're in a you think that we're gonna go into a hard recession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Now now prefacing, I think if you have Trump in office, I think that you get a recession. If you have Kamala, you're just gonna get a permanent depression. So it's like whichever whichever way you go, it's just do I get um I can't say that on YouTube. Uh do I get the butcher's knife or do I get the peeling knife uh, uh finger jab, right? It's just the, the 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 choice is painful, but it's just the question of how painful it's going to be. And again, I people need to separate this notion that the stock market and the economy are the same thing. I expect a bull run this week. I expect it to pump, right? Based on everything that's going on, expecting PCE coming out there, right? Like there everyone's in euphoria. Like the fear and greed index is in greed territory. We got Jerome Powell talking on, what is it, Thursday? So right before PCE. And again, he's gonna, if he comes out and drops any tidbits of PC is going to be hunky-dory. Like he's, he, he's just like, they're believing their own lie. They're at the point where they believe their own lie because they have been so dour of what inflation is going to do and they're basically like the sent the first tinkle of in, we've conquered inflation we're winning is just they just sniff it up like the hopium and then they give markets things that maybe not necessarily in the best interest of the market in a long-term view but it's in the best interest of what their political agenda is right now so okay so here's the thing i fully agree with you that the economy and the stock market are not the same thing my whole philosophy, right? I guess you could say my whole philosophy is the fact that I personally believe that we're going to have a melt up, right? So yes, I do believe that we're going to get much more higher inflation. Uh, the, eco- the economy is going to suffer, a lot, or at least the individual. The individual will, will uh, suffer a lot, but in the reverse, right? I'm not talking about that we're going to get, a, the prices are not going to fall, right? Yeah. A depression slash recession, uh, essentially means that things are going to fall. Things are going to, you know, become really, really cheap. Prices are going to fall. That's not my personal opinion or personal philosophy as to how we're going to get, uh, as to how things are going to go bad, right? My personal philosophy is that because of them cutting interest rates by this much, we are going to get an absolutely melt up. Things are going to get so much more expensive. It'll be, it'll make your head spin. It's going to make uh, it's going to make the prices of 2020 and 2021 look cheap in comparison to what's going to happen, right? So I'm not saying that, um, like, for example, um, you believe that we're going to get in, in a recession. Yeah, uh, but we're going when to be I in say, a recession. when I say recession, but, depression, I mean for asset prices. That doesn't necessarily right. mean that, like, again, economy, but, right, but, but, food wait, prices. Wait, wait. But, but hang on a minute. But, but my question is, do you believe that you're, we're going to get a recession slash depression in the traditional no, or? it's going to be it's going to be complete. It, it never is the same, right? If you look at every single I crash, I, it, that's it, not what I meant. What I meant was in the traditional definition, like two quarters of negative GDP or two quarters of negative GDP, prices falling down, home prices crashing, stock market falling down. That's what I mean. That's a, the that's the traditional definition. Whereas for me, I think that we depends are, who's in office. Depends who's in office, right? If 
you get Orange Man, then it's going to be full on crank that up classical definition, two quarters of negative GDP process falling. You're going to get the whole works. You're going to get everything, everything cranked up to 11. If you get the other one in office, then it's going to be how can we manipulate it, right? To your sense, like your, your head's going to spin based on the prices that are going to be out there. And it's just going to be how can we pump the numbers? You know, the famous we created all these jobs and then revise it by a million later on right it's just going to well, be well actually my my uh, it's the famous is the famous uh is the famous trump had the most amount of job loss in in his presidency yet not realize and yet not realizing you know, his presidency no, no, ended not, here and covid ended here <laughs> no 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 it's not real it's, it's not real it's not the the phrase is not not realizing the phrase is and 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 um and uh, removing the fact that COVID was the cause of it, it wasn't yeah. him, yeah. right? Uh, and then on top of that, and then, and, and then and then saying, oh, but you see, but you see, Biden's had the most amount of job growth, just like, right, because, because all those jobs are returning. <laughs> so if you take the reference, if you take the reference from from Biden's administration onward, oh yeah, it looks great. But if you take the reference from 2019, 2018, it's you're still way below. Yeah, right. It's, exactly. it's all those people. It's, it's all those people that are saying. Oh, you see, Lumen has been going up recently, and I'm like... But you don't but, look but, back but, at the 98% haircut you got. Right, right. It's just like, you don't look back five years ago. You look back on, like, the year-to-date yeah, kind and of... And it's, it's like, like, uh, like, I know some people on the channel like Intel, right? I just, I can't stomach that haircut. I literally, I look at right. Intel, I'm just like, why? if it dropped this much, why can't it go to 12? Right? And, right. and that may be a flawed logic. That may be a horrible logic. I may miss out on an opportunity. But to me, I can't stomach. An index is different, right? If the index falls 80%, I'm going to be going selling my kidney and basically uh, finding a way to make more money, right? Like just yeah. point blank. But yeah. if I look at individual companies, I'm just like, I can't stomach it, right? Personally, I don't have the risk appetite that some people have. Others may profit from it, right? I'm not saying that it's a horrible idea. I'm just saying for me, my risk appetite is not there. And also going back to the whole housing thing, we have seen degradation in the housing numbers, especially in new home sales, new home starts and all this. We saw Home Depot and Lowe's earnings talking about the consumer is basically dead and we're going to get new home sales data. So is this going to cor start correlating more with the seasonality, right? So with this one, I would say the first two data points could have been misrepresenting seasonality, right? Because it's a best guess. But now that you've seen seasonality is more harsh, if you're attributing it to seasonality, these numbers should come in better in line. And they're expecting an increase in building permits, um, also a slight decrease in new home mm -hmm. sales. To me, I'm like, if these come in bonkers bad in the sense of like blood red across the board, then we're going to start questioning, is it true seasonality or is it actually things going horribly wrong in the economy? And right. that's where I'm like, so many YouTubers have talked about <laughs> uh, housing crash for three years now. And it's like, there is no data to support it yet. We're starting to get inklings of it now. If you look at, if you could just go on Zillow, guys, go Google, uh, Google your area with Zillow and see how many houses there are comparative to when it was uh, 2022, 2023. It's like 2022, 2023 was like three dots. Now it's like hundreds. So the question well, is... Well, it also depends on the, on, on the price range because let me tell you, in my correct. area, if you want to get anything, you have to go minimum. 300,000. Yeah, but I'm talking Minimum. about just in general markets on the home, regardless of price, just markets on the home. Like if it's staggering how different the worlds are right now. I guess, but, but I, I don't really, I, I personally don't really see it. But uh, in regards to the thing, okay, so we're basically on the same page. It's just that you believe it's depending on what happens on November Everything, 5th. everything is dependent on November. Everything I, depends. I agree. And I do have you seen that. the new aggregates? In regards to the uh, RCP aggregates, battleground states. No, it is. I mean, a I live in a battleground tie. state. So. It's a dead it's a tie dead. now. Dead tie. So yeah. it's been shifting, right? So it's gonna be interesting uh, covering the next month, right? Especially as we head into the election, because that lead went from this to this. Yeah. So now, now the question is, how's it gonna go? And then we can blame your state for everything afterwards. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. come down to I, Pennsylvania. I, yeah. I'm just like, yeah. well, this is gonna be a yeah, fun one. Yeah, and as, especially not to digress a little bit, but but there was already a story of uh, of a guy uh, in Montgomery County, like one of the people that has to do with um, elections. With, with, 
with, with, with the elections, uh, printed out ballots and already sent them out without them actually being tested to see if they were actually within the format. So that's already happening. It's yeah. already happening. And it's yeah. just like, I'm, I'm like, yep, yeah, knew, I knew that was going to happen. Wouldn't it Gallup. be funny? Wouldn't it be funny, right? He wins Virginia, doesn't need PA. We'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Which, by the way, guys, I know we're digressing here, but we are going to cover, we're going to do... At least for me, I don't know about you, Mike, but I'm for, I'm I would gonna, like to do, huh? I'm going to do it with you. Okay, Election so live we're going to go all night, basically. Yep, you understand this, right? Like, yes. we're going to go. till like, three literally. in the morning, four in the morning. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, that, that will be fun. Uh, I don't know if we'll do it on YouTube, but maybe just Rumble. I don't know. Probably but, both. Probably both, but, yeah. It's going to be fun because I want to see how futures move as... It's like a state comes in and it's like drop. State comes up. Yeah. It's like, it's going to be great for a trader's paradise. But the wrapping up, right? Like we got the fear and greed index where it's at sending a greedy. Again, yeah. I'm very curious. Again, when does bank earnings start up again? November? No, no October, right? October. 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 So, um, actually, let's go to a good old JP Morgan when their earnings are going to be. JP Morgan is usually the first ones. To, so, J, JP Morgan, City, and, and Wells Fargo are the are the first ones. So, so JP Morgan's see. earnings are Friday the eleventh, October twenty four. So, only weeks away from the good old earnings season starting back up. I'm actually excited for this earnings season because I want to see Warren Buffett's earnings. I'm like dying to see if I'm right. We'll see. We have a Berkshire Hathaway is a little bit far away though. Berkshire uh, Hathaway let's is see. Not. Burke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brk. Brk. Okay. BRK, A or B, it really doesn't matter, but BRK. By the way, speaking of BRK, um, oh. Berkshire Hathaway A is is at $685,000. This thing could actually reach a million. Hey, I don't know if they'll do a stock you know, with them, but... Isn't, isn't the election November 5th? Oh, wow, their earnings on November 4th. So if we get Warren Buffett selling everything the day before the election, we know exactly where we're going. Wow, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Whatever, if Buffett sells Bank of America, Trump's gonna win the election. If he holds Bank of America, Kamala's gonna win. I'm gonna use that as the indicator of what's gonna happen November fifth. I would not. I would not. But okay, you let's see if I'm right. Right? You know, let's just let's just make it a fun uh, drinking game out of it. I'm not. Well, well, I'm you water you, Mister Allergic to Alcohol. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be drinking coffee. Yes, Which I'll be, doesn't really matter during the election night because coffee doesn't affect me. So, it's whatever. Lucky. But, yeah. Anyway, uh, to wrap it up, crude is in an interesting spot. You know, just I said we're in this gigantic wedge and uh, we came down and basically tested the wedge. Now, the question is bullish or bearish crude? What do you think? I, I, I mean. If it goes down, then I get to buy my Chevron at uh, near my average share price right now, which is 101 bucks. So yeah, I mean, I would love to buy Chevron again at 100 bucks, man. That'd be awesome. That'd be absolutely awesome. Uh, huh, if it we'll goes see. up, then okay, great. I think you know, I think you're gonna get a bounce into uh, a bounce into the election. I think you're gonna go like kind of like this and then come back down. Uh, I don't think the usage of oil is gonna be pretty high considering everything that's happening in the economy. Right. But it's going to be interesting, right? And geopolitically as well. Yeah. So. And OPEC's but not here's really... The thing, though. But here's the thing, though. If Trump does win, oil's going to crash. Yeah. Oil's absolutely going to crash. Everyone's going to... So. We're just going to have, like, you know, futures open, and it's just going to be, like, a, not even a straight line. It's just going to be, like, we'll, we'll open down here. Like, we'll have a candle down here, and it'll just be, like... Yeah. <laughs> we'll be, like, we'll start at, like, the bidding at $50, and then we'll just keep going down. But but companies are probably going to skyrocket. Like crude oil is going to drop, but companies themselves are going to skyrocket. Maybe not initially, right? We're going to have to see like how I it all plays out. Saying in general, yeah. yeah. But this is going to be a. F I mean, whew. so so for this week, what do we have coming up this week uh, when it comes to like news? Uh, PCE and Powell, pretty much. Uh, Thursday, okay. Friday, Wednesday, you got new home sales. S and P Composite Tuesday. Uh, a couple Fed members speaking here and there. Consumer confidence Monday is just it's going to be bland, right? Goldsby um, speaking. You got uh, consumer confidence on Tuesday with Bowman speaking. The main Fed member that dissented in the decision, right? She won yeah. at twenty five. Yeah. Um, and then Wednesday kind of just left its own devices. Uh, uh, 
Cougar speaking on Wednesday as well, but mainly it's going to be Thursday, Friday, where you get like the bulk of the data. And okay. we're going to see how the markets react. We shall see. Are we live streaming from PC? Uh, yeah, we can do a Friday stream. You can do a Friday stream? Yep. All right. Any other streams throughout the week? Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, I would say Thursday is when we have Costco earnings. Yeah, we can do that. Costco Thursday, earnings Friday? on Thursday? Yeah. The Costco really? earnings Thursday, yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. Costco, yep, Costco. I just covered it in, in my part, so yeah. I have it the on the shopping C-O-S-T, list. It's like C-O-S-T, my guy. I know. I know. I have it on the shopping list. That thing is just... Yeah. Dude. They're expecting uh, Thursday. Okay. So we can do Thursday, Friday, right? Back-to-back streams. So we'll see how we this goes. Uh, reverse awesome. split incoming, most likely, for Costco. Full. Reverse? No. Oh, no. Split. Split. Sorry. Split. Split. <laughs> my bad. No. You said it. Please. Please. No. Don't make it more expensive for the love of good. Please. <laughs> it's already... No. I, I remember covering Dude, Costco when it was down thing. at $500. Now it's like 1000 I'm like, I could see this thing splitting 10 to yeah, 1. I, it's like I the famous thing. A thousand, Hit 1000 10 to 1. I think that 1000 it might split. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, we'll the thing is, like, even if they have... Met earnings, if they split, they announce a split, Natural is going to push up in the markets. Yeah. 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 So. Well, not necessarily. I mean, NVIDIA yeah. announced a split and that didn't change anything. No. Broadcom announced a split and it really didn't change anything. They ran up into their splits. Into the split, but I'm saying after the split. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, into the split. It always runs okay. up into the split. That's kind of how it's always trended out. But, yeah. Totally. So, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you had a wonderful time. Happy Sunday to you all. So, uh, happy NFL Sunday, right? You know, some of you watch football, so got to shout out all of you guys. <laughs> I don't necessarily need her to see, but again, got to shout out that to everyone. We're going to be streaming, uh, let's see, Thursday, Friday, so make sure 7 p.m. Eastern on those days. And throw down in the comment section below what you're most excited for this week. We also will have the previous video about the melt up expectation over here on on the left hand side so make sure you guys check that one out and again thank you all so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one